It was on Thursday, June 10, 2021, when we received the first official gameplay trailer of Elden Ring. With it came the announcement of a release date, January 21st, 2022. In a little over six months, we will have in our hands the next game by From Software that follows the souls. The trailer is about 2 minutes and 50 seconds of jaw-dropping, hype-inducing action that any Souls fan will immediately recognize. It does not try to hide it or cover it. This is the next Souls, and it is looking to be glorious. In this trailer we get to see many things, aspects of the world, aspects of the lore, combat, and characters. Some of them are apparent, and others you need to dive deep to understand. After watching this trailer more times than I can count, remember, or am willing to admit, I managed to gather a list of those details that may escape a viewer when they watch this trailer for the first, second, or third time. We are going to dissect the trailer and go over each of these details so that we can fully understand every bit of information that was given to us on this day. It is true, there is a lot that we cannot hope to know or understand. It is far too early and there is not enough information. That said, we are able to obtain pieces of knowledge that we can separate into game mechanics and into lore. Taken from our experience of past Souls games and the images from this trailer, we can recognize aspects of Elden Ring that the Tarnished will have access to when we play. In regards to lore, we can see some characters that definitely bring back memories of older titles, and some dialogue that tells us which direction the story of the game could go. Obviously, at this time, anything related to story and lore is nothing but speculation. That said, speculation is very fun, and it has always been very present in the lore of the soul. I have had the trailer run in the background to serve as a refresher of what was released and to be a canvas viewing to work from. Now, let's dissect the interesting images and the important frames and begin the first of many discussions on this incredibly awaited game. First, we are going to take a look at the game mechanics that we can predict will be in Elden Ring. Then, we will move on to the more speculative possible lore and story implications. There is a lot to cover, so I will leave some timestamps to let you navigate to each section that interests you the most. Let's get started. The first mechanic to cover is Resurrection. A staple in the Souls series, there is always an explanation to why the protagonist cannot permanently die. Whether it's the curse of the undead, being bound to the nexus, or trapped within the dream, there is always a reason. The first few moments of the trailer show the tarnished on the ground, seemingly dead, but soon we see from a first-person perspective that we wake looking at a strange hooded lady. Later in the trailer we hear her explain that the tarnished will fight, and they will die in an unending curse. It would seem that there is once again a curse that keeps the tarnished from permanently dying. Is it a curse similar to the curse of the undead? It could be. One thing is certain, the tarnished are not a constant. The same hooded lady says the tarnished will soon return, leading to believe that there is a condition to be met before they can appear in the world of Elden Ring. Whatever that condition may be, we are once again only certain of one thing. death cannot stop the Tarnished. Not too long into the trailer, the Tarnished summons a spectral horse and begins to ride into the world. There are actually a few very important implications to this. The obvious one is horseback travel, but also the fact that the Tarnished can easily traverse through different terrain on horseback is a good indicator that we are dealing with an open world. Being able to call upon your steed to speed up your travel is usually an answer for situations where we are dealing with a large map. 
taking into consideration the ease of travel, I believe that the open world concept will be accompanied by seamless transitions that will usher us from one area of the world to the next. Not only that, but images of the tarnished going past a bell turtle, for lack of a better name, and later on meeting head to head with a guarded carriage, it leads me to believe that the world will be filled with such encounters. Whether they are random or scripted, we will have to see. Nevertheless, an open world souls is something that I am very excited to see. Only for a second, we get a small glimpse of what looks to be some kind of pot creature. I am not sure if the pot itself has limbs, or if it is a creature that is inside the pot with limbs sticking out of it. In any case, they do not look very threatening. That said, they also do not look like an NPC. In my opinion, we are looking at the new crystal lizards. I believe that these funny looking creatures will begin to run as soon as they see you and, if you manage to catch them and break them, you can have access to the goodies that are inside the pot. Only time will tell. As you can see in this short looping clip, the Tarnished seems to be winding up for a big attack on the enemy in front of it. Those familiar with the Longsword in the Souls series will immediately realize that the Tarnished is going to do a one-handed R2 attack. That said, his wind-up to the attack is very prolonged. This could be video editing for the trailer, or it could mean that the Tarnished is charging or delaying his R2. We never see the attack connect, but it would not surprise me that the charged or delay R2 would return. They were very successful in Dark Souls 3. This clip shows the Tarnished blocking an enemy attack by two-handing his longsword. This is nothing special, but what did catch my eye is his counter. Immediately after blocking and with seemingly no delay, the Tarnished goes into a spin that he finishes with a full overhead slash straight to the enemy's head. It is beautiful. This could simply be part of the weapon's moveset or it could be a specific mechanic for blocking with a weapon. That said, if this is what the standard two-handed R2 of the longsword looks like, then I am in love. It deals so much damage that the enemy was staggered, allowing the Tarnish to finish it off with a visceral attack. I am happy to see that these attacks are back. They look brutal and extremely satisfying. It would most certainly not be a Souls game without a reliable role, and it appears to be present in Elden Ring as well. Obviously, it is much too early to understand how the role works exactly. That said, from these clips, we are able to see that it covers a respectable distance in a quick fashion. Judging by the attacks that the Tarnished evades, we can say that these roles come with the standard iframes that help us get around enemies' attacks. I am not surprised that rolling is present, but it is sure nice to see it in action. One thing that I am very happy to see is that weapon arts may be back in Elden Ring. The first clip that I am showing you is of the Tarnished focusing energy into his longsword to create a soul greatsword. It looks fantastic. That said, I do not see any kind of catalyst on the Tarnished, which leads me to believe that this power is coming from the sword itself. In this second clip, we see that the Tarnish is executing a similar technique by focusing energy on a spear and attacking with a wide swing. But it is in this final clip that makes the best case for weapon arts. Here we see the Tarnish dodge right through a beam of energy by ducking underneath it. This does not look like the normal roll that we saw earlier in the trailer. In fact, it looks very similar to the quick step weapon art that Daggers had in Dark Souls 3. Going further, if we freeze the image at the very end of this scene, we can clearly see that the Tarnished is wielding a dagger in his left hand. This makes me think that the quick step we saw earlier may very much come from the weapon's power. About halfway through the trailer, we see a swordsman fighting some enemies with a curved sword. 
What really catches my attention is at the end of the clip. This tarnished has a left hand that is glowing bright, kind of like a flame. Indeed, I believe that this could be a pyromancer and in his left hand is his pyromancy flame. Curved swords and pyromancy go hand in hand in the lore of Dark Souls 3. We know this from the techniques of Karthus, so it does not surprise me to see this warrior using it. But it is in this second clip that we get more information. As the crawling hand enemy approaches the tarnished, we can clearly see a stream of fire moving from the tarnished towards the crawling hand. We do not get to see a pyromancy flame, but it is a clear indication that the Tarnished can manipulate fire in some form. Pyromancers rejoice. It should come to no surprise that we see an image of the Tarnished resting at a bonfire. This looks to be a normally created bonfire. It remains to be seen if this is just for scenery or it actually has mechanical implications. That said, are these bonfires going to be found throughout the world, or can the Tarnished make one anywhere? Will they only be in static spots? It will definitely feel weird to not be able to level up at one of these. It would not be a Souls without some jolly cooperation. The trailer clearly shows a Tarnished utilizing some sort of cube to summon allied Tarnished to help on his quest. We are able to see two phantoms summoned at once, so it would not seem that there are not many changes to the mechanic. Playing an open world souls with a few friends would be legendary and definitely a top tier experience. But the question stands, will there be invasions? Excuse me, but did you see the horse double jump? This is absolutely hilarious. We have gone from prior souls where the protagonist can only do a weak jump after running to having a double jumping horse. Obviously, depending on how this is handled, we may have a lot more options when it comes to platforming. This is definitely going to be something to get used to. In multiple parts of the trailer, we see the tarnished travel with a torch on his left hand. This is something that immediately reminded me of the first trailers that came out for Dark Souls 2. These trailers pushed the torch very hard, explaining that it would be a vital part of the experience as the dungeons would be dark. In the final game, torches were not as important as you would think, and the mechanic was only used in a few key spots. I hope that things are different in Elden Ring. If they truly are going to add a torchlight mechanic, they need to make sure that it makes a difference. It would certainly not be a Souls game without sorceries and indeed they seem to return. In this case we see a very well dressed Tarnished firing what looks to be the Soul Stream spell from Dark Souls 3. We do not get to see much and it is understandable. Sorceries have always been very important to each of the Souls games. I am sure that they will have very powerful spells. Throughout the whole trailer, there is a very distinct theme of class war. First and foremost, the Tarnished is not a single character, but a group of individuals. We hear that they will fight, and that they will die. They implying multiple. They implying a group. The Tarnished are not appreciated by a different class of characters. They are the foul Tarnished the lowly tarnished. They seem to be on a second level, a lower level. They are looked at as a group of lesser individuals that can even be ordered and commanded. But this class system does not seem to be fixed, as the fighting and the dying can give way to a tarnished rising up in ranks to that of a champion or lord. This possibility, this ambition, is what drives the tarnished to fight, to die. And still, they are looked down upon by those who already hold these positions of power, going as far as to saying that the Tarnished are simply playing a game. But the Elden Ring seems to be a key for the Tarnished. 
obtaining it and using it could be the power needed to rise up in the ranks, not only for the one, but for all of the tarnished. I am extremely intrigued by this, and I cannot wait to discover more about the tarnished, the lords, and their ongoing battle. Throughout the whole trailer, we see and hear the voice of a hooded lady. It sounds like she is young, and it sounds like she knows a lot about the tarnished. In fact, it appears that it is she, the one who finds the tarnished dead on the road at the beginning of the trailer. This lady will definitely be a key character in the story. She gives me Firekeeper vibes. Or maybe there's a resemblance with the doll from the Hunter's Dream. Maybe she will be with us throughout the whole journey. Or maybe we will only see her a few times. In any case, there are secrets that only she can tell us. And I cannot wait to hear them. The mention of the Golden Order brings a few points to the table. First of all, it is broken to its core. This leads me to believe that at one time, the Golden Order was a powerful faction in the world of Elden Ring. It reminds me of the Healing Church from Bloodborne, a powerful faction that is in decline and has very strong connections to the story. In the case of Elden Ring, we do not know if the interest of the Golden Order aligned with those of the Tarnished. Maybe it was the order that caused the unending curse. One thing is certain, the symbol that appears in this broken temple definitely holds major importance. For a few seconds we see the tarnished kneeling in front of a masked figure. This may not be in subjugation. This type of kneeling by the protagonist reminds me of the same one done in order to level up or join a covenant. This masked figure may be an NPC that can aid us in our journey through some kind of covenant boon. It is difficult to say with this image, but it did catch my attention as covenants were always an important part of Dark Souls. This image of the tarnished walking to a large painting on the wall made me think of Ariamis and Ariandel. I hardly believe that they would be involved in Elden Ring, but the concept still stands. There may be other artists of such power able to create whole worlds with their art and bind them inside a painting. It is definitely one of my favorite concepts in the Souls games and I will be very happy to see it return. Please, give me another painted world. One of the best parts of the trailer for me were the few seconds that we get to see this werewolf knight howling with a claymore at its back. This character concept is incredible and I cannot wait to meet this knight in game. I am going to be honest, the first impression that I get from this knight is that he will be a friendly NPC. I sure hope so, because he is too cool to have to kill. One of the most action-packed scenes we see in the trailer is the tarnished fighting a four-winged dragon. It looked majestic and extremely powerful, with a fire breath that seems to be a threatening one-shot. That said, the most curious thing to see is how this dragon was able to manipulate lightning and use it as a weapon as he slams the thunderbolt into the ground. Until now, we have been trained to know that lightning is a dragon's greatest weakness. If we now see a dragon use it as a weapon, does this mean that this has changed? The red-headed lady in heavy armor is one of the most intriguing characters in the trailer. She caught my attention for two things. First, her size and apparent power makes me feel that she will be a strong boss that we will have to face. And second, she immediately reminded me of Lady Maria. I expect an extremely difficult, mobile and fun fight that will test the tarnish to its maximum potential. Already, just on the first trailer, she is one of my favorite designs for a character that we have access to. Another character that immediately caught my attention was the Bar of the Knight. A knight in dark armor surrounded by what looks to be barbed wire and wielding an executioner's type sword with a wide blade and no tip. He seems to wield a dark power that is able to manipulate the tarnished's body. I am not going to lie. 
The first thing I thought of when I saw this knight is that he reminds me of the Penetrator, wielding a dark and powerful magic that could very much be hurting himself through these barbed wires. A knight that might not be evil, but has turned to it seeking power. There is a lot that we do not know, but I will keep a close eye on the barbed knight. One of the greatest attractions to any Souls game is the weapons that we can find within it. Normal weapons, unique weapons, boss weapons, heavy weapons, light weapons, two-handed weapons, or ranged weapons. One blade, two blades, dual blades, and even whips. The versatility of the weapon types is what makes the Souls games so much fun. In this trailer, we are actually able to confirm the existence of a handful of weapons. I am sure that there will be more, but for now, this is what I was able to find. If you have seen any other weapon within the trailer, do not hesitate to let me know in the comments below. I have watched this trailer almost frame by frame, but it is always possible that I may have missed one. we have a trailer. Also, we have a release date. Elden Ring is real, and it is not too far out into the future. I cannot wait to play it and explore every inch that it has to offer. But before that, I cannot wait to see the next trailers and gameplays that are to come. Hopefully, they will reveal more about the world and the characters that inhabit it. This is a game that will go down in history. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope to see you on the next one.